Hey everyone, thank you for joining me. My name is Derek, and I'm going to be giving the story on how we built a service mesh from scratch at Pinterest. The story begins with the traffic engineering team, which I joined in 2017 and was relatively new at the time. We had adopted the edge infrastructure as our domain, particularly the CDN and DNS infrastructure, as well as our ingress load balancing to our front end applications. One of the first projects that I was able to participate in on the traffic team was replacing our HTTP proxy inside our ingress load balancer. The ingress load balancing architecture at Pinterest consists of a cloud load balancer that goes to a set of HTTP proxies that can do more rich and feature complete proxying, such as HTTP routing on headers or paths or provide rich stats and observability. The proxy that we were using at the time was lacking some core features that we really wanted in our proxy and was constraining our ability to innovate and go faster in the ingress load balancer. We looked at the existing proxies available and did a feature comparison of what they all provided. Envoy checked all the boxes that we needed for an edge proxy, but we were particularly excited about the C++ API that allowed us to do whatever we wanted inside the proxy with a type safe and fast language, along with the strong unit testing framework and awesome build support. We were also really excited about the open source community around Envoy. It was very receptive to any issues that we had and people were willing to work with us on workarounds or to encourage us to contribute pull requests to the Envoy code base and improve the proxy better for make it better for everyone. To get ready for Envoy, we did a lot of operational homework to make sure that we had fast and reliable deployments, well integration with our CICD and monitoring and alerts. We wrote plenty of runbooks around Envoy to make sure that we were prepared for when things could go wrong. And we wrote numerous extensions, both internally and open source, to make Envoy feature complete and provide exact parity with our existing proxy. Our objective here was to have such close feature completion that we could essentially swap the load balancers and nobody would notice. In the bottom center image is the email announcement that was sent out once we had successfully launched Envoy. But launching Envoy was only just the beginning of the mesh story. Meanwhile, elsewhere in the infrastructure, we had a big migration occurring to shift all services to MTLS. The service framework team, a sibling infrastructure team that manages service to service communication, was working on the frameworks that all these languages used to get them ready for TLS. We started with the Java service framework since Java is one of the most commonly used languages at Pinterest. And that migration involved a lot of work, including bug fixes and libraries and a massive coordination effort to ensure that deployments were safe. Once the completion or once the migration for Java was completed, we looked at the long list of languages that we had ahead of us, Python, Node, C++, Elixir, and Go, and thought, man, we really have to complete this all over again for each of these languages. That sounds like a lot more work, and not to mention the intercompatibility between the languages. How do we make sure that Python TLS libraries play nicely with the C++ libraries and so forth? And all of this is TLS over Thrift as well to add another layer of complexity. Rather than repeating all this work for all these services again, we started looking at Envoy as a solution to terminate TLS elsewhere in infrastructure. The way that we had completed our load balancer infrastructure is such that Envoy can be deployed to arbitrary hosts and accept arbitrary configuration um, using environment variables that are set by our deployment tooling. So we looked at doing just that. We played around with taking some non-ingress hosts and adding them into the Envoy deployment group as an experiment to say, what happens if you put Envoy there? And once it is there, what does that configuration look like? And play around with the different settings that we needed to successfully terminate TLS on a Canary machine. Once we had a successful configuration going, we adjusted our ingress load balancers to recognize this new deployment environment that had Envoy terminating TLS. And using Envoy's incremental routing, or sorry, weighted routing, we gradually shifted traffic from non-Envoy TLS to Envoy with TLS. And eventually we got something that looked like this, which if you squint a little bit, it's kind of starting to look like a mesh, right? We have Envoy on both ends uh, proxying traffic. And so once this uh, TLS termination project was completed and people started to see the value that Envoy was providing, that if we could put it elsewhere, it could take care of all these really difficult problems that we had across a variety of programming languages. And thus began a great flooding of use cases and feature requests. And the common vernacular around Pinterest included Meshify and Meshified. Meshify is to, of course, to add a service to the service mesh for proxying traffic. And Meshified was the state of whether a service has been added to the service mesh. While we're adding all these services to the service mesh, our control plane stayed relatively simple. One of Envoy's shining features that many people know it for is its XDS API that allows it to config be configured over HTTP or gRPC. 
And we did leverage that for service discovery since service discovery is a highly dynamic component with hosts coming in and out of service discovery all the time. But the other configuration aspects of Envoy, like routes, clusters, and listeners, didn't really change all that often for us. We found us tweaking them maybe once or twice a week, maybe a bit more often than that if we were doing an active migration. But those all stayed relatively static once they were in place. So we figured, why are we going to add complexity where we don't need it? And so we just kept these as flat files that get deployed to the hosts. And these are just Envoy configuration files, handwritten, full YAML files. And as we started to add more services into the service mesh, we found this configuration starting to become more difficult to manage. And so we started to introduce Jinja templating as a means to control the complexity, as well as to build higher level abstractions that other developers can use to adopt the service mesh. This example here shows the ideal base case for a service owner, assuming they're using all the defaults we would like them to use and aren't doing anything too crazy with their service. You can ideally just import some macros, define your ingress, and then define the cluster you want to talk to, and the rest just gets generated from there. The, having all the configuration in a single repository also allowed us to do a lot of powerful static analysis and sort of compiler level controls on the configuration. When a person is compiling the Jitra templates, we can check and verify things such as routes always point to a valid cluster so that we never end up with um, a bad route in production. We were also using Envoy's schema validation tool to make sure that all the configuration options that people were using would actually be recognized by the data plane once it got into production. This has saved us many times from bad configuration options, even just typos or whatnot that get posted into a pull request and the CI tools would check and say, no, this isn't gonna work. This isn't gonna make it to production. And so we can fix our configurations before even putting it into the pipeline. At this point, we had really nailed the fundamentals of what it meant to package and deploy Envoy in a generic fashion. We had the ability to deploy Envoy to any service through our deployment tool. We had the ability to configure Envoy for any service through our compiler, config compiler and configuration pipeline. We had templates in the configuration to provide a simple interface and provided the ability to write raw Envoy when needed, just in case we had some crazy use cases that required more in-depth Envoy expertise. We also had a build system through the open source Envoy project that allowed us to write C++ extensions, apply patches, and regularly synchronize our Envoy build with upstream's code. We were often syncing our upstream code up to twice a week, deploying new Envoy builds. And the build system that allows us to do that helped us go very quickly. We also had a static analysis system that I just mentioned for our configurations that made sure that our config changes were relatively safe to, to do. With the fundamentals in place, we started to get a lot of new use cases and feature requests from teams outside of traffic. One of the, my favorite use cases here, one of the first ones that came from security is internal web envoy. The idea being that Pinterest has a lot of internal web services, websites that are um, running for a variety of reasons, deployment tooling or say an ML tool to analyze scoring on images, whatever you could imagine. We wanted all these websites to use safe security defaults, even though they are internal to VPN. To do so, the security team built a configuration pipeline that enables Envoy to be deployed with the standard and well-accepted security defaults for web services, such as CSRF protection, course protection, TLS termination, and click jacking cross site scripting prevention headers. All this without the web developers having to really do much except define their service in the Envoy configuration uh, Jinja language. The key idea here being that internal web Envoy, while being a really cool pattern and deployment strategy, is really just another node in the mesh. It's not a unique case that we need to cater to. We simply need to write the configuration DSL for it and then treat it just like any other node of the mesh, deployed to a host and given an arbitrary configuration. And this now runs in front of all of our major web services, including open source software such as Fabricator and Jenkins, as well as a variety of internal web services. Some more mesh specific use cases also started to come our way after proving the success with internal web Envoy. The web infrastructure team had a particularly interesting case where the deployment patterns used for the web app were really difficult and fragile to work with. And it was constraining the team from adopting newer infrastructure such as Kubernetes. By analyzing the problem, we realized that this is really a routing problem. And if we could write an Envoy filter that would correctly route requests to an arbitrary destination that we want them to go to, we could very much alleviate the problems that the web infrastructure team was facing and allow them to adopt newer infrastructure. And so to do so, we wrote an Envoy extension. Then the site reliability team came to us and said, well, if we're deploying Envoy everywhere, um, 
then perhaps we could do SLI monitoring in a very generic way for HTTP and Thrift, which is true. Uh, regardless of what language you are using, we could deploy Envoy in front of your service and have Envoy monitor for success and error rates and report those back. And the site reliability team can then compose error budget reports that are generic to any application that's deployed within Pinterest infrastructure. And the privacy and legal team came to us as well and said, oh, this is really cool. You're proxying all this HTTP traffic through Envoy. That means you could probably see all the cookie headers being passed around and make sure that the cookies being used are what we allow to be used um, with the concern of user privacy in mind. We don't want to be accepting third-party cookies that we find malicious or could compromise user privacy. And so Envoy provided a really powerful um, observability point where we can inspect all cookie traffic and make sure that all the cookies were what we expect them to be, that they have proper expirations, and they're using the right semantics for cookies, such as secure, only, and HTTP. To do so, we also wrote an Envoy extension to solve this problem as well. And so we started to accumulate all these external use cases and start to really become a platform that people wanted to use. We often did not have to ask people to use Envoy. It was more often that people came to us asking, can you put Envoy in front of our service? And I would like to re uh, reflect on how did we get here? Uh, how did we build this mesh almost seemingly accidentally? We started off with an ingress load balancer and ended up with Envoy being deployed everywhere and having many new use cases that we had never foreseen before. And I like to believe that we got here by solving business problems first. We never really had a meeting saying, let's build a service mesh. It was always about what business problem is it that we need to solve. In the first business problem, we needed a more reliable and uh, better observability in our ingress load balancer. And so we deployed Envoy. Then we needed TLS termination. So we took Envoy as is and deployed it elsewhere. And then very custom use cases came in like cookie monitoring and SLI monitoring for which we could write extensions using this powerful C++ API that we love. And in that process, we began delivering incremental progress and showing business value at each step. There was no mass time where people were waiting for a new mesh. It was kind of just incrementally growing and accumulating new use cases that were very specific to the problems that Pinterest needed to solve. In this process, we also unified the traffic and service framework teams. We found that they were solving very similar problems in regards to proxying and service management. And so we decided to unify those efforts in following the idea that every Envoy proxy is just a node in the mesh. The ingress load balancers from a mesh perspective aren't really that special. They're just more Envoy proxies getting configuration. We also got here by having a build system that allows us to write these powerful Envoy extensions and customize the behavior at the data plane. While you do want to orchestrate as much at the control plane layer, it's very powerful to have the ability to manipulate the data plane behavior. HTTP cookie monitoring is not something you can really implement as a control plane feature. That's really something that has to be done at the data plane when it's running the traffic through it. And lastly, but probably most importantly, we got buy-in from teams outside of the traffic team. It wasn't the traffic team pushing for people to adopt our infrastructure. It was a lot of people asking to use traffic infrastructure. And that's a fantastic position to be in as an infrastructure team. And throughout all of this, we of course will grow and incrementally evolve the mesh to handle more complex use cases. And our control plane is increasingly becoming more robust and centralized. And uh, we now stream our configurations over gRPC instead of flat files deployed to hosts. But we always push this complexity until we actually need to do it and focus instead on solving business problems first. Thank you for joining me. And that's the story of how we built a service mesh at Pinterest.